Hello and welcome to GameSpot's The Next Big Game. This month we feature a game that nobody had heard of a mere eight months ago, but one that has captured the imagination of gamers all around the universe. A game about exploration, a game about the desire to see what's over the horizon. It's that same desire that has people around the world desperately wanting to know what type of game No Man's Sky really is, and this week we'll answer many of those questions. But first, perhaps the most pertinent question of all. How can a small development team based in the south of England possibly make a game of this scale? Myself and the guys from Hello Games have a bit of history. I met co-founder Sean Murray at a games expo in London when we realised we were both in the same county in Ireland. Before I joined GameSpot, I interviewed them as they were developing their very first game, Joe Danger, a series that was very successful, spawning two mobile spin-offs and a full sequel. In fact, the night Joe Danger 2 was released, Sean joined us for some beers on a GameSpot livestream, and whenever we're in the same city, we always try and cross paths. So over E3, we organised a few hours one evening to sit down and talk to the guys from Hello Games. But in typical E3 fashion, everyone was running late. Apparently they're running 30 minutes late, they're over at uh, our good friends at Giant Bomb and the JW Marriott. Did I tell you what happened this morning? So we're like 15 minutes from going live and they're the first game on the, on the, on the show floor. Like I got a text of Alex, he's like, well, he calls me, he's like we're outside the South Hall. <laughs> you need to be inside the West Hall oh, yeah. and, and also they didn't have passes yeah. so I had to like get wristbands off of Sarah and like sprint out there. Can't believe you kept us waiting for this nonsense. What's <laughs> up, buddy? Good to see you again, man. Before Hello Games, uh, where did you work? What, what projects did you work on? Uh, I actually started out at Criterion, um, which was kind of pretty small at the time. It was like 15, 20 people or something like that, which is like how I envisioned games to be. Mm. And then when I left, it was about like three years later, and it was like 400 people or something ridiculous, which is like this massive growth. And uh, We'd been bought by EA, and I didn't know half the people on the team. And actually I enjoyed it and stuff, but it just wasn't for me forever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And actually I was like, if I stay here, I'm at that point where I can actually picture myself being like, you know, old and being here, working on like Burnout or Need for Speed for the rest of my days, <laughs> you know? I was originally a concept artist. I worked on Warhammer Online, mm -hmm. the original Warhammer Online, which never got released. I moved to Sumo, mm. where I worked on loads of Sega games. I became an environment artist, and I became the lead environment artist on so games like Virtua Tennis, sort of Outrun, and Sega Superstars Tennis. Lots of really colourful Sega games. Didn't, I, haven't, I couldn't, I can't give you a list of games that I worked on. Did you work for Kuju? I did work for Kuju. Okay, there you go. Yeah, and um, so I didn't have many released games until uh, I met Sean. Did you have any released games? No, not until, well, not until not until I worked with Sean, basically. Okay. How many games did you work on that weren't released? Quite a few. <laughs> I know there was a Game Boy game that was released. Okay. I was very proud of that. I started out my like pretty much first day at um, Criterion. I was like sat beside Ryan, who had just joined. We kind of grew up together in that studio, mm -hmm. and then I had met Dave um, and worked with Dave for a little bit. He was another programmer. Um, so there was us three coders and we were talking about setting up and Dave introduced us to Grant and Grant and Dave used to go to school together. Um, so it was a really tight bunch. I mean, we all knew each other for years kind of thing. Like it was kind of necessary because we ended up starting up Hello Games in this tiny little room. You well, actually you came, you came in there and you showed up with the cameraman and you, and that was too many people. Like we were running out of oxygen, basically. Joe's success meant they didn't need to stay in that tiny room for long. As the team moved to a new studio, they expanded from four all the way up to 10 employees. But expansion brings its own set of challenges creatively. So when it came to starting a new project, remarkably, they decided to split their team in two. So there's 10 people working there. And for that, for us, that felt big actually. 
that felt like we were going back to big studio. Like 10 isn't big, but it's still something. It's double the size you were. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. But what fuels me is that really small team prototyping. Mm. I just love that and I live for that. It was a slightly different forge, the four founders, but we actually had a little room in the studio, like the smallest room. Mm. And we went in there and we, we genuinely just like literally locked the door. We had a separate entrance and we didn't show the rest of the team, which sounds crazy. Wow. Because one, it was kind of mental what we were doing. And two, it gave us this like, this passion that we, that we hadn't had since Joe Danger. You know, we were developing that and it felt like it was make or break mm. the entire time. And we knew that we would have to show people eventually. And so we wanted that again. And, and we wanted this pressure of like, the guys are working really hard next door and they're putting Joe Danger on other platforms or they're working on other stuff, working really hard. And we need to like, like justify, justify what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. And we, we need them to come in and say, that's cool or whatever. So we went a bit crazy and we actually didn't show them until a few weeks before the VGXs. No Man's Sky first broke onto the collective gaming consciousness when Jeff Keighley featured it at the Spike VGX Awards. But what you probably didn't know was that Sean actually tried to have it pulled when he became worried that people wouldn't think it was real. Like, <laughs> Jeff Keighley seems to be some sort of, like, I don't know, he's got some mythical power or something like that. <laughs> he, he genuinely just mailed me out of the blue and said, he, he's, he's very American, so he said, you know, um, if I gave you a shot at the big time, would you take it or something <laughs> like that, right? And I said yes, and then I told the guys, and we totally weren't prepared for it. So we just killed ourselves basically doing it. Built it, built it, put together a video, sent the video out, kind of got no reaction, just silence okay. from, from Jeff and stuff. And then I got really worried and we decided we'd show some press. So we called in some UK press and they were just completely silent. And I asked them what they thought and they said, I don't think we should tell you right now. And they just went off. And we had to leave that meeting. Dave knocked on the door and was like, we have to go. Got in a taxi, the four of us then flew straight out. You're kidding. And uh, we actually met you yeah. that, the next day. Well, it was still kind of the same day for us. So we'd just flown over. <laughs> Insane. You were the first person who saw it, uh, yeah. who said, it looks great, and then... But I was still, si I remember being silent, but I remember watching it and then going, wait, are they actually doing this? Like, and then what happened was I turned and saw your faces and saw how terrified you guys were <laughs> and went, oh fuck, this is real. Like, did you ever find out why those other journalists didn't, they said, we don't want to tell you? One of them kind of thought, it's just some sort of fake, you know, four okay. people haven't made this and I don't want to comment on it. I, I guess now you know, because you've seen the public reaction, that what that must have been was that people are thinking, this is actually, this, this game is trying to bite off quite a lot, I wonder if they're able to do it. Yeah, I guess it's part of that, right? I mean, we went on the BGXs and um, I tried to pull it and, and Jeff said I couldn't. He was like, I've really fought to get you a slot mm. and, you know, I'm not going back on that now kind of thing, uh, thankfully. Sean and his team suddenly had the world's ears and the initial hype was starting to gather the momentum of a runaway train. Only an act of God could stop them now. Not a white, but a wet Christmas as river levels peaked in the early hours. In parts of Surrey, rescue teams were out as record flood levels were reached and breached. Across the UK, more than a hundred flood... Um, yeah, so, I mean, we we. We were on kind of a high actually, finishing up at Christmas. It was like, this is awesome. People seem to be reacting really well to the game. And it was like, uh, probably the, you know, the, the, the best thing that ever happened to the studio kind mm. of thing. I got a call Christmas Eve night saying like, your office is, is flooding basically. And we're actually on a ground floor and all our PCs on the ground. And they were like blowing up and exploding and things like that. Um, so what about, how did that, did that damage the game? Did you guys have stuff off-site backed up? Uh, we had stuff off-site and at the, the time we kind of said, don't worry guys, you know, we've, we haven't lost anything. But the reality is you have mm. and you just, you just don't know how much, you know. And you also don't want to say because people are just going to go, forget about it, it'll never come out. It looked crazy anyway. <laughs> You know, so we were just like, it's fine, don't worry. <laughs> you know? So it did, uh, it, did, it did put you guys back a while then? Yeah, absolutely. And, and for us, this E3 has been really 
you know, for us, is like this triumphant thing, mm. like we didn't let it stop us. The VGXs proved to be the warm-up act as Sean took to the stage at Sony's E3 press conference, giving what was once their little four-person project even more exposure and with it a hell of a lot more expectation. Surely now even they must be asking themselves if they can pull it off. What does it feel like now that the game is out there and that people are asking questions about what this game is? Um, to have the expectation of other people uh, on top of the, the obviously personal expectation with a project like this. I think I think it's brilliant, really. That's like it's what you want. It's what it's like. It's the best feeling, really. The best feeling to have so many people care, and you know they can say what they want, really. And just the fact that they're talking about what we're making is, is just an amazing... That, that fuels you if you're feeling down. You see that when we flooded, you know, it, it's nice to be working on a game that people want. Right? That is a big deal. Um, but I've never experienced this before. Even on, like, even on Burnout, we were, you know, so far. Several, several hundred people we still weren't on stage at one of the, the keynotes, you know what I mean? This is like a level of expectation that it's really hard for a small team to, to deal with. Right. And yeah, I mean, people want it to be every different type of game as well. It's really open to interpretation and, and we're leaving it a little bit open to interpretation. So yeah, it's definitely a double edged sword, you know? All right, then let's, let's break into what exactly No Man's Sky is. So, uh, you've shown off a lot. Tomorrow on GameSpot's the next big game, we unveil the gameplay of No Man's Sky. We give new details about the moment-to-moment -moment play, your role within the universe, the tools at your disposal, and the possibility of playing with others. All right, I'm off to kill a dinosaur on the spaceship. See you then. My car was found um, in a in a local garage. They'd um, they'd actually, luckily, they'd um, pulled it up onto one of those electric hydro whatever they're called big machines that mm. lift the car up, uh, and then it flooded <laughs> and blew all the electrics. Oh no! So when we found it, they're just like, yeah, it's it's up there. Your car. <laughs> was it okay? Was it? Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. Yeah, I could get it back a few weeks later when they actually just. <laughs> You know, <laughs> fixed everything and got it back. Damn, that was, uh... Are you still driving it today? No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's died of its own accord now. Okay. But we won't talk about that. I like it. <laughs> All right. It's like Final Destination yeah, no. of cars. It survived that and then it just. It was meant to die. <laughs>